nice and quiet. All righty, brethren. It is time to begin. Pick up where we left off last week. But before we do, I'd like to ask Mr. Harvey, who wouldn't mind leading us in prayer. I'm going to pick on Eric today because I picked on Brad last time. <laughs> Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to come here and learn from your word. Keep our hearts and minds open to today's lesson so that we can take out the world to better serve you and bring more people here to learn more of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so just to get us back up to speed of where we were last week, uh, we were taking two different columns, one being uh, the gospel and its, its various components, things like the atonement, justification, sanctification, adoption, and glorification, as well as the response column of what? Hearing, Hearing believing, believing, confessing, confessing. repenting, confessing. baptism, and faithfulness. And we're taking those columns and we're looking at various scenarios and we're trying to see, based on the information given in those scenarios, what are some ways that the gospel applies to the problem in the scenario and what are some ways that that individual might be prompted or encouraged to respond to the gospel given that particular scenario? And we looked at a few, few examples last week of that. We've got a few more to look at this week. And if we can finish that up on time, and I suspect that we will, we're going to get into that big question. Remember you had some homework? Why don't Hopefully. We, why don't we? Why don't we evangelize? <laughs> and there are some follow-up questions with that. Well, what do you mean by evangelism? What what? What all is entailed in that? So hopefully, uh, given the time we have at the end of this, we can dig into that and really start to flesh out that question and come to some meaningful conclusions together. So let's go ahead and dig into our next scenario. We're looking at a young lady named Laura. Laura has struggled to have good relationships with her parents and her siblings for years. She is convinced trying to have healthy relationships is a hopeless effort. So we look, look at her scenario, and we want to decide, all right, what are some things, some, some gospel applications that we can make? What are some things that she might be not doing as a response, that she should be doing as a response? Let's see, let's see what we come up with together. She doesn't feel like trying to have healthy relationships is worth the effort. All right, there, there's a belief factor in here. What, what might she be believing? She told you, right? She doesn't. Yeah. She doesn't believe yeah. that relationships are a worthwhile endeavor. <clears throat> so what should she pursue believing instead? Let's say she's right. Let's say she's right about her family and the friends and siblings and whatnot that she has currently that that is a hopeless endeavor for her. Is there, is there an answer of hope that the gospel provides to her hopeless family situation that she currently has? Well, the answer is yes, but it's trying to figure out where it fits in. Okay. With the scenario. Dropped, so let's do that. I dropped down a little bit to faithfulness. Okay, why is that? On her part. Just because I'm not sure, you know, if she really thinks it's hopeless, then maybe she really needs to work on her faithfulness. Perhaps it's not. Or work on her own faith as to how to deal with that situation. Okay, so perhaps there's a, a faithfulness component in here. She's uh, That goes right along, right along with believing. Yeah. What are you continuing to believe and, and delve into on a personal level? Uh, so if there's a faithfulness component that needs addressing, when we look at the gospel side of the column here, is there a particular element that that growth would fall into? Sanctification. Your sanctification. Now, remind me, what does sanctification have to deal with? With being set apart. All right, that's the, that's the front half of it. And it's looking in the mirror. Making... For the purpose of what? Well, making adjustments. That's right. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it's like the nursing process. Okay. The nursing process is assessment, mm -hmm. 
evaluation and reassessment. Mm -hmm. Sanctification is the same thing. Essentially, yeah. She's made an initial assessment that says my relationships are hopeless. <laughs> but if you if you don't pursue any kind of treatment, you know, giving the, the medical example, all right, I've assessed that I have this problem. Are there solutions? Yes or no. Am I going to pursue any of those solutions? And when you do pursue those solutions, we, we would, going back to the spiritual element, we would consider that part of sanctification, growing to become more like Jesus, growing in your faithfulness and that sort of thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I forgot to add that you have assessment, but then you also have to put plan in place. Yeah, and plan, then of action. Yeah. plan of action. Plan of action. So, <coughs> Laura, I understand things aren't good at home. You're having a hard time having any kind of a, a meaningful relationship with your parents. Same thing holds true for any siblings you got, maybe even some of your extended friends. Is there something that God has provided for us through the gospel that gives us a healthy, meaningful relationship with a parent or new siblings or new friends? See, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around the whole <coughs> dynamic of why is this relationship messed up? And I don't we, know. we don't know. Yeah, don't see, know. that's just it. And I'm trying to, because I think I might be complicating it more than... Yes. Uh, but, um, well, adoption. All right, why is adoption an answer to her situation? Because she knows she's okay with them. Because she knows she's okay with them. <laughs> with God and Jesus. Right. That relationship, but not maybe the other one in that neighborhood. That's right. You look at her family scenario, uh, it is insecure. That there isn't a security within those relationships, which is part of what's leaving her feeling the way that she does. In the adoption that the gospel provides for us, you have great security in that relationship with the Heavenly Father, our brother Christ, our other brethren within the church body. See how that works? And so, yeah, it, it might be objectively true. Her, her at-home relationships are awful. But it can also be objectively true that there is an answer that the gospel provides for that feeling of hopelessness when it comes to relationships. Terry? I believe it says in there, too, all things are possible with Certainly. Well, given given the situation, it could be that she is a Christian and her family is not, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or they are of another faith. Mm -hmm. So she's been ostracized. However, well, for years it depends on you know a time factor, but. Uh, Let's say for the sake of argument here, her family situation <coughs> will not improve. This period. It's not going to happen. Uh, and let's say that she doesn't have the ability to get connected to other Christians. And so all she has is her relationship with the Lord. You know, there are people who fit that kind of a scenario. Is there ever going to come a time where things will greatly improve for that situation. Well, the, only th the only thing I can think of is glorification and she's going to have to die first. Yeah. That's, that is the uncomfortable reality of some of these scenarios. We looked at uh, one last week with a gentleman with terminal illness. His physical circumstances were not going to improve on this, this side of eternity. But even in a scenario like here with, with uh, we'll, we'll say, terminal loneliness, there will be a time, the gospel has an answer for that scenario, there will be a time where that loneliness will come to an end once and for all. And you'll have perfect fellowship with God and with, uh, with fellow believers. You see how this works, though? It, no matter what the situation, you can dig down and see, all right, there is an answer that the gospel provides for this situation. <coughs> Make sense? More or less? All right, let's... So then her 
her relationship with the father and the son, that's all she has. Potentially. So then there's a, there's a, a heavy reliance. But still, man is a social being. Mm -hmm. he, he, he or she needs something with skin on it. Right. And that's not, you know, uh, negating the necessity for a relationship with, with our Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. but touch mm -hmm. is very, very important. That's true. So, she has a battle on her hands. She does. There's no denying that. Uh, but looking at this situation from, like, the worst-case scenario... There, there's no earthly help that's coming. There's no earthly relief that's coming. Even if that's the case, there is still help and relief coming. It's just, it's on the other side. So. Well, that's not to yeah. say it can't happen on this side either. That's true. We, we don't know what God might be orchestrating behind the scenes that Joseph. he could bring something <laughs> in. Joseph, yeah. yeah. Joseph was a prisoner. He left for dead. He, he had a lot of... A lot of hardships thrown on him. He didn't get along with his brothers. Yeah, Ser <laughs> serious family issues there. I think he taunted his brothers. So. Yeah. Did he deserve it? <laughs> not what he had. Not, not what he got. <laughs> no. All right, let's look at another scenario here. Gerald. Oh, I guess we haven't gotten to Gerald yet. Surprise. I can't remember who we talked about. Is that a spoiler alert? Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> Gerald was recently diagnosed with a terminal illness. He is grieved by his circumstances and becomes terribly depressed that his quality of life is only going to get worse. All right, Christian, what good news do you have for Gerald? He's going to die. That's not good. Yeah, we, we snicker, but, but, all right. What, what hope does Gerald have? Adoption and glorification. Yeah. Yeah. He, everything on the left-hand column still applies to Gerald's situation. Given, given that he's a Christian. Everything in that left hand. All right, Gerald, you've, you've got a tough road ahead. Here's something that you need to be able to anchor yourself down into. What does your relationship with the Lord look like? And then you can go through that left-hand column and see, all right, because of what Jesus accomplished through the gospel... All of these things are yours. So what has the atonement accomplished for Gerald? He's, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a clean slate. Right? He's got a clean slate before God. He's got a clean slate before God. The sin has been removed from him. It's been dealt with, paid for on the cross. But that's not all, right? Just like the infomercials. Just one more thing. That's not all. What else... <laughs> Did the cross of Christ accomplish for us that we need? Well, we can stand justified and righteous in front of God and That's holy right. in front of God. That's right. The cross and what Jesus accomplished for us, when he said it is finished, that means something. It means our sin has been paid for. The righteousness we need to stand before God has been <laughs> accumulated and, and granted to us. The sanctification being set apart and made holy and and the Spirit of the Lord working with us to con conform us to Christ is still active. What about that relationship that we have because of the cross of Christ? The adoption. We are children of God. All right. Precious, precious are the death of his saints. Right. Right? God, God sees as a loving father Gerald's circumstances. And Gerald can rest in the fact that he knows that his father cares about what he is dealing with. And Gerald can move forward with these unfortunate circumstances with what hope in mind as a child of God. It's the last thing on the list. Glorification. All right, what's awaiting Gerald at the end of this terminal illness? Glory. All right, something's gone terribly wrong with his physical body, hasn't it? If you, if you got a terminal illness, something has gone terribly wrong. What is he going to receive? A new body. A new body. Yeah, circumstances are very, very tough in the time 
time that he is dealing with this. But he has the hope waiting for him that, yeah, this, this body's going to fail me, but God is going to give me a glorified body, imperishable, incorruptible, perfect, and able to dwell in his presence forever. You know, this is one of the wonderful things about the gospel is that it can take the worst thing that this world has to offer us, death, and transform it into the greatest new beginning that you could ever conceive of. So there's, there's good news for Gerald uh, of what Jesus accomplished through the gospel. But what does Gerald need to do in response to that, to that good news? Believe it. He's got to actually hear it. He's got to actually believe it. Right? You really trust that God's going to come through on this. That he's got you in the palm of his hand. So what is the fruit of him actually believing that that's true? Oh, um, well, you know, he's going to go through all those stages, the grief stages. Mm -hmm. But then the final stage is acceptance. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine that faithfulness and growing closer because he is going to be getting closer. Mm-hmm. Well, we all are. That's very true. If he's going to get closer sooner than later. Yeah. And so to develop that that relationship, so that sanctification process is still working, mm -hmm. especially while he's on this earth. Certainly. He's going to have battles to face. But then I look at it as, okay, I'm going on a trip, but I'm not coming back. Mm-hmm. So, let's say Gerald believes the left column. He believes what Jesus has accomplished for him on the cross. Are there any great truths that Gerald perhaps uh, might, might want to respond in confessing? Well, that Christ is the Son of God. Yeah. And that he died for him. That's right. Confessing that truth, anchoring down into it, really, really <clears throat> sink your feet into it. Why is it so essential to sink your feet into the fact that Jesus is the Christ who came to save you. Do you, you think he's going to be tossed in, to and fro by this diagnosis and all the things he has to deal with? What do you got? What do you got to do before you build a house? Build a foundation. And there it is. That's right. What is the foundation that Gerald needs to anchor himself in? Christ is Lord. Who Christ is? Yeah. What he's done for him. Right, Terry. That's right. That's that's part of what he's confessing. He's not getting anywhere without Jesus. He's the only way to get where he wants to go. Yeah, I am the resurrection and the life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, let's move down the list a little bit here. <coughs> Do you suppose, Gerald, given his diagnosis and perhaps some of the things that he's dealing with on the way to on the way to glory? Uh, that there might be any instances where repentance might come into play? Well, <laughs> if he isn't a Christian, yeah. If he is, a, he Christian, is a Christian, if he is a Christian, oh, there's going to be some bad days. Mm -hmm. So, something comes up, you have a bad day, you're really suffering. <clears throat> Gerald's really suffering. He's it's like, doubt. Doubt. Mm. God, why are you why are you making me deal with this? What did I do to deserve this? Why me? Why me? <laughs> uh, maybe he lashes out with God. God, I hate you that you've brought me to this point when I did nothing wrong. That reminds me of a transition period, mm -hmm. like with the childbirth. Mm -hmm. And you'll find out. Yeah. That was it right there, Kirk. <laughs> you'll find out when you. <laughs> When you go through transition, you'll hate him. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> Ask her. But this goes back to something we talked about earlier. It's 
sometimes we look at the idea of repentance as this kind of, ugh, I don't want to have to deal with that. That's kind of, going to feel good. We, we have the proper perspective on repentance. We should see repentance as what it really is for us as Christians, a time of uh, renewed death in relationship with God and refreshment. Say, so, you know what? I was really doubting. I was mad at you. But I come to a deeper understanding of, of my circumstances. I come to a deeper understanding of who you are. And I'm, I move through that. And at the end of it, I actually end up being drawn closer to God, having a, a refreshment in my soul despite my circumstances. David. David, yeah. <clears throat> David was down in the pit. And what did he come out of the pit with? A much healthier... <clears throat> better relationship with this Lord. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change the circumstances. Didn't make the circumstances better. But he was better. At you the think Abraham side. was angry with God when God asked him to sacrifice Isaac? I'm, I'm pretty In sure he way. probably had some strong feelings about that. Mm -hmm. Don't know what they were. <laughs> but, uh, but he did. That that was, he went through. Why? Yeah, huge yeah. why. Why are you putting me through this? Yeah. Making sense? It's kind of heavy this morning, but as long as it's making sense. But he did have deep faith that God knew what he was doing and that he would bring his son back. Mm -hmm. I believe this is the last one. Charlie loves the Lord, but has struggled with addiction for as long as he can remember. He feels that sometimes he loves his sin more than he loves God. He feels helpless and stuck. What, what encouragement would you give Charlie? What are some gospel applications for Charlie's circumstances? <laughs> Read Romans 7, I think. Is that it? Uh -huh. Romans 7? Yeah. Charlie, you're wretched. <laughs> yeah. But there's hope. Right? There's hope. There's hope. There's hope. And then read Romans 8, 1. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. All right, so let's let's dig into this one a little bit. He loves the Lord, but he struggled with addiction for as long as he can remember. <coughs> he feels that sometimes he loves his sin more than he loves God, and he feels helpless and stuck. Terry? I'm around people, work with people, mm -hmm. work with me, that's had a lot of addiction problems. And uh, I don't realize hard it is to kick that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one guy is putting it all out there. He's trying hard and he's got another guy that's a thorn in his side and won't give him a break and it just irritates the high off of me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to give up on it. I don't care what the other people think. I don't care if people don't like me because I'm dealing with them. That doesn't bother me at all. Concern about him. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm doing this. And it's just not little things. It's a lot of stuff that I have to do. Yeah. And I don't care. It's fine with me. That's good. Let's look at a, a scenario from 30,000 feet. Is it possible for a Christian who loves the Lord to struggle with sin? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All God's people said amen. Yeah. We all struggle with sin. So the advice you give to Charlie is really advice you'd hope you'd be able to give to yourself. So, what? All right, there's a sin problem at play. Is there something that the gospel does to deal with it? Atonement. Atonement, yeah. Atonement. All right. God dealt with our sin. Okay, now what? Well, do you think Charlie perhaps is starting, well, I'm dealing with this sin problem. I'm always wrestling with it. I'm constantly failing. I... I know I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. All right, what's the answer to that? You're not going to be good enough, but who was good enough who stood in our place? Jesus. All right, and what does he give to us? Justification. Right. He has justified us before God despite ourselves. And in him, we have the righteousness of God that we need to be able to stand before him. All right, well, Charlie... You know, your sin problem's been dealt with. I know you're going to wrestle, and you're going to always kind of wrestle with this idea of, 
inadequacy before the Lord. But I got some more good news for you. If you are a child of God, then you have the Spirit of God at work within you. And He's doing something. What's He doing? Sanctifying you. He's sanctifying you. As you wrestle against your sin, whether you see it or not, you are being drawn into closer and closer conformity to Christ. All right. Is Charlie a child of God or not? Yes. <coughs> Do you think the relationship he has with the Lord is going to have any impact on how he moves forward in his faith? Whether he actually accepts that he's a child of God or not? If you don't accept your status as a, a child in the family of God, it's going to be all that much harder yeah, so to, to grow. Yeah, believing comes in. Yeah. Believing. Yeah. All right, Charlie, you know, you've, you've wrestled with this addiction, whatever it is. We don't know what it is. You wrestled with this your whole life, and maybe you'll continue to wrestle with it through the remainder of your life. Has God made a promise to you to fix once and for all what you're dealing with? Mm -hmm. What's the gospel's answer to that? That's adoption. Glorification. Okay, Glorification. All right, Charlie, you, you, might, you might wrestle with this for as long as you live on this earth. But just keep going. Stay faithful. And God is going to bring you through on the other side. It's good news, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you have the good news side for Charlie. And what do you want to encourage Charlie? I can talk. What do you want to encourage Charlie to do with it? Are you listening, Charlie? Do you believe it? All right. How do we know you believe it? Let's see the fruit of that in your life. Who is, who is Jesus to you? He's Lord and Christ. He's the one who's he's in charge. He's, he's got things in control. He's the Christ. He is the one who came into the world to save you from yourself. Are you going to be able to bring your sin before him and work through that sanctification process? Right? Are you going to take those sins before him and repent? Even if you have to repent a thousand times more today? Right. Go ahead, Joe. Let us come boldly. Throne to of, the throne of grace. Grace, yeah. yeah. That's it. There's good news for even people like Charlie, but which you is have, you have to all believe that. The problem is going boldly to mm -hmm. the throne of grace, you're dealing with a guilt problem now because you've sinned. Okay, and that takes us back to where? Atonement. Atonement. All right, what are you believing about the atonement? That's already been taken care of. Am I, am I hung up on the guilt? All right, I've sinned, I feel guilty, and I can't move past the guilt. What am I not hearing and believing? Yeah. I'm not hearing and believing what the atonement has accomplished for me. Right? If, if the atonement is what takes our sin and our guilt off of our shoulders, and we're hung up on it, there's something about what Jesus has done for us in the atonement that we're either not hearing or believing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then what? You start through the cycle all over again. You go through the cycle over and over and over again. We call that, you know, on a computer, the circle of doom. The circle of doom. Yeah. Well, not for the Christian. It's not a circle of doom. You're not, you're not spiraling down. You're, you're, you're ascending up. Yeah, you're going up the other way. There you go. Um, but I think, like with Charlie, we all deal with that. Yes, we do. We may not have a, an addiction problem like what Charlie's got. We have, you know, pick whatever your thing is that you have to contend with on a regular basis. Maybe it's doubt, lying, whatever. Only you know that, you and the Lord. And you say, oh, am I ever going to get past this? You find yourself in the same situation as Charlie here. And the answers you give to Charlie are the same ones that you need for yourself. And it's, it's good news. Terry? I say this all the time. How do I say it? Uh, his last day is what holds me mm -hmm. more than anything. I mean, more than anything. It just, just grips you. Mm -hmm. and, and you hate what he had to go through to love what he did for us. That's right. Okay. Any other comments on this? I, 
I just can't even count the time she's sitting there. Mm -hmm. She can't stay clean. Yeah. Um, she and her husband are separated. Um, they were in the midst of a divorce, but he has such a good heart, he won't go off and leave her. Mm -hmm. Or divorce her. They don't live together, but you know, he won't die. put the divorce through. But she has two little girls. And the teaching needs to go into those little girls is very much in you. Yeah. Um, you know, if you never smoke a cigarette, you can't get addicted. Mm -hmm. If you never do drugs, you can't get addicted. If you never touch alcohol, you can't get addicted. Mm -hmm. And I don't think our kids are being taught that. Because they're getting into so many harmful things. Mm -hmm. Well, now nah, I'm going to leave it alone. We got other stuff to discuss. Well, as much as I'd like to go down the rabbit hole. Yeah, I believe I heard that it was uh, Donald Trump that said he lost a brother mm -hmm. to alcohol and he will not touch the stuff. He says, I'm just not going there. You know? yeah. And that's uh, <clears throat> just something that we all need to make sure, one, we don't fall into it. And two, that we make sure our children, mm -hmm. any, anybody we have access to, to help them not to go that direction, with whatever the vice may be. Okay. You know, you have, you're known people, or maybe you yourself have been in something that you still have that lingering guilt, even though you've mm -hmm. gone through that whole process. And so I always like the idea that you can lay that at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Every day. You know, just every day. Just lay it out. Right? Mercy is new every morning. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, maybe you wake up thinking, oh, I can't believe I did that. It's been years. But you can wait. wait well, and if you have to go through the, the process day, again. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. The reason I always this way, but a lot of it has to do with who you run with. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah. I think it says bad morals are up to good morals. Sure. Yeah. And you got to pick and choose the right ones. That's right. It has a lot to do with it. Are we ready for the big scenario scenario that y'all posed a few weeks back? Why don't we evangelize? Now, I first want to hear from you before we dig into the the lab portion of this. <laughs> what do you mean when you think about evangelism? What what comes to your mind? Farming. Farming? Yeah. Okay. Planting seeds. Farming? You're right. planting seeds. Okay. Okay, so wherever you go, you plant a seed. Okay. Or you're you're laying pebbles. Let's let's ask the question another way. <laughs> you hear from the pulpit on a Sunday morning, we need to go evangelize. In your mind, what has the person who said that just asked you to do? Door knocking. Door knock, okay. Go out and teach somebody. Yeah. Talk to people. Don't knock my handwriting. <laughs> my handwriting is awful. <laughs> door knocking. I can read it. Good luck. All right, door knocking is an example. What else? Uh, go make disciples. Establish. What do you think you need to go do when you hear that? A Bible study. A Bible study, okay. What else? At least reach out. Mm -hmm. At least make an attempt. All right, make contact. Yeah, that's <laughs> that'd be the first part. <laughs> All right, this is enough for the exercise. Maybe you have another one, but this will get us get us going. <clears throat> Let's start with door knocking, and really, you'll see that the answers are pr probably going to be about the same for each of these. All right. You've heard, go make disciples, go evangelize, and in your mind you're thinking, okay, that means I need to go knock doors, make contact with somebody, and have a Bible study. We'll just combine all three. What are some of the things, when you hear that prompt, that rise up within your hearts and minds and say, ugh, I don't know about that? Rejection. Fear. Fear, okay. 
Fear, yeah, I'm gonna put this in the center because this is really the heart of it. Fear. Fear of what? Sometimes it shines. Okay, we'll, we'll loop that in there. Fear of what? To say the wrong thing. Okay, we'll do a couple here. Rejection, I heard. How can we? I, I'm on to what you're saying there, Jeanette. Fear of saying the wrong thing. Let's try and put a label on that concept. If I don't know what to say, what might you label that? Misspeaking. Hmm? Misspeaking. Misspeaking. Okay. How do you spell that? M I S S P. -E yeah, that kind of looks like a word. <laughs> Misspeaking. <laughs> hey, you go digital, word catches most of your typos. You've seen my handouts. I can't spell. All right, rejection, misspeaking. I heard another one. What about, and I don't, I don't want to use this word in like a, a harsh way, but incompetence. I, I don't have what I need to do the job. Okay. <laughs> I can't spell. I'm incompetent at spelling. I know my place. Anything else? I hope he doesn't write you love letters. I have to type them out. And then hand sign love and squiggles. Okay. All right, rejection, misspeaking, incompetence. Anything else, Major? I don't know if this falls under fear. I'm not sure that it does, but what about somebody who really thinks that you know so much that you come off being just really aggressive and forceful? I'm not sure that's a fear, but I think you can yeah. go up to somebody and think, you know, I really know all of this and you need to listen to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that can be one. I can't, I don't, I don't like you said, I don't, I don't think, think it falls under fear, fear <clears throat> but... Uh, We'll run with what we got here, and if we have time, we can do another one. All right, so the, the big thing here we're looking at is fear. And then we need to ask the question, well, fear of what specifically? So let's start with the first one, fear of rejection. And we, hopefully we'll be able to see here how the gospel answers our fears. Fear of rejection. What are the outcomes of rejection? Specific, as specific as you can be, that you fear. <coughs> you shame you won't have the answers they need, that they need, or that you won't be able to find the scripture that they want, or that you need. Okay, I put that under. I don't know enough. I put that under incompetence. Okay. Shame. I think under rejection, it's just a flat somebody saying, I don't want to talk about this, so just don't even bother with me. Okay. What's that risk to you on a personal level if you're rejected uh, from your, your gospel presentation? Discouragement. Ooh, discouragement. <clears throat> discouragement? What about your feelings? You think you, you want to share the best news on earth with somebody, and they say, no thanks. Does that have potential to hurt your feelings? It might, might also make you angry. Okay. Or confused. <laughs> confused. Like with my YouTube comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I confuse people all the time. But all right, so under rejection, you fear perhaps... Discouragement because, oh, it didn't work out. You fear having your feelings hurt because, you know, you, you approached it with love in your heart and they stomped on it. Anything else under rejection? Um, um, well, I have a word for it, but it's stuck. It won't come off my tongue. If you're made fun of. Ridicule. Ridicule, okay. else? 
keep thinking of the one guy who like ran out of his house to stop chase us. Went into the sea. Oh, bodily harm? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had that. <laughs> yeah, we got we got rumped off. So that's that's enough for the the exercise on this part. So. Oh, man. We'll, we'll just do the one column rejection. I have fear. Sub column rejection, rejection specifically of, all right, I'm going to face discouragement. I might face my feelings being hurt. I might face being ridiculed. I might suffer bodily harm. Now, the assignment then is, does the gospel have anything within it to address those specific fears? Yes. Yes. Every one of them. You're fearing discouragement? Does the gospel <clears throat> encourage you? It should, yeah. if you understand it. So yes. What about your feelings? Does the gospel make any promises that your feelings will be spared in this life? No. By those that you're trying to evangelize? No. But does the gospel have a remedy of comfort mm -hmm. for your feelings? Bless it. Bless it. Ooh. What about ridicule? Jesus said, you know, you will never be ridiculed for being my disciples or following after me. No. Again, it says blessed. All right. He's calling you to an action that might hurt, but does the gospel afford us anything to comfort us despite any ridicule we might face? Yes. Bodily harm. You, you, might, be, you might get persecuted in a physical sense. Is there... A promised blessing, even if you were a martyr for the cause of Christ. Yes. Yeah, even if even if they take you out, glory is waiting for you. So yes, there is. All right. So the gospel claims all of these things are true, and we're afraid. We're believing in something. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> This, this is it, right? We're believing in one of two things. Fear or the gospel. If fear wins out on either side of this, all right, I'm more afraid of discouragement. <laughs> I believe more in the possibility of discouragement than I believe in what the gospel promises me a true, is true about the comfort that God affords me. What's going to win out? Fear. Fear. You'll see the fruit of what you believe. What do I really believe when it comes to these things? This is the process of this. So when, you, when you're posed with a challenge from the pulpit, let's say, this is the hard work that goes in. What specifically am I wrestling with? And does the gospel have an answer for that specific problem? And we'll find that it does. And we might just not like the answer. One of the things that kicked me into searching a way to study for people was I had this envision of standing at the day of judgment. And my friend turns and looks at me and says, why didn't you tell me? Mm -hmm. And that just haunted me for the longest time. Mm -hmm. So I got busy and got searching for studies that I could do with people because I don't want that to happen. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. We understand the process, working through it. It's not comfortable. I will grant that 100%. But when, you, when you're up against yourself, ask the hard questions. What am I really believing here? You can do the same thing for the other things we looked at. All right, well, I fear being incompetent. Do you have help? Yeah. Who helps you in your evangelistic efforts? God's Word does. God's Word does? Is He present with you? Yeah. Always? To the end of the age? All right. Does the increase come from you, or does it come from God? 
says my word. So what about, do I believe the increase comes from me or does it actually come from you? And I just, am I going to be faithful in planting and watering? That's a good point. When you befriend somebody, you open up more possibilities to open doors yeah. to have that conversation you need to have. So learning how to be friendly. Yeah. So establishing the relationship is, is very mm -hmm. important. And I think that's when we look at we look at the conversions in Acts, we can see some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, even with Christ, the woman at the well, and it was—he he established it very quickly. Mm -hmm. But he established a relationship, That's and right. uh, the shotgun effect. Now, but cast a wide net—you never know. But a right. targeted approach uh -huh. is it's good way. Right. Terry, people don't care how much you know until you show how much you care. That's it. Well, thank you all for your participation. Let's get ready to worship.